Welcome to the TMMI Quick Panel Plus Getting Started Guide. Our objectives for today are to allow you to start with a new Quick Panel Plus, configure it, create a simple project, and download it using Prophecy Machine Edition. And then to understand how the Quick Panel Plus interacts with various programmable logic controllers in the industry today. The assumptions are that you have Prophecy Machine Edition installed and have a basic Windows and simple networking background. I have a VNC connection to my Quick Panel Plus so you can see what the actual screen on a Quick Panel looks like. The first thing we want to do after you've powered up your Quick Panel is to assign it an IP address. We can do this by clicking on the Start button, the Settings, and the Network and Dial-Up Connections dialog. From here, if we double click on the FEC1 network connection, you can see the settings to put in the IP address. I've specified a hard IP address of 192.168.24.73 for my quick panel. Of course, you could always set your quick panel up to obtain an IP address automatically via a DHCP server. If we click somewhere into the system, you'll notice that an input keyboard pops up automatically for you and this keyboard is controlled by the little red pin icon in the right hand bottom corner. If you click on that you can hide the input key panel for example. Once your IP address has been put into the quick panel click the OK icon to accept it and then close the dialog here to get back to the main screen. Once you've input the setting in the quick panel, you need to remember to back it up by using the backup icon here on your main screen. If you double click on the backup, it says backup completed successfully. This will save all of your quick panel settings, including the IP address that we just entered into flash memory. Therefore, it will be remembered over a power cycle of your quick panel. Now that that has been set up, we need to start our Prophecy Machine Edition software. And here I have it up and we want to create a brand new project to be able to program our Quick Panel. I do this by right clicking on my computer and selecting New Project. And this brings up a wizard for me. It says, what's your project name? I'll call this one My Quick Panel. And I'll change my project template to Configuration Wizard for View slash Logic Developer PC. And when I pop that up, I get my Configuration Wizard here below me. First up is Target Type. You see I have a Quick Panel Plus, but there's other options for Quick Panel View slash Control or regular Quick Panel. We have the Quick Panel Plus, and I happen to have not the 15 inch that comes up by default, but I have the 12 inch Quick Panel Plus. And I'm choosing to use just the HMI portion of it. The Quick Panel Plus can also be a controller with logic, but I'm going to uncheck the logic so it doesn't add that. And I'm going to be connecting it today to a GE RX3i controller. So I can choose a native driver, and the protocol for the GE over Ethernet is the GE SRTP protocol. So this will allow me to set my target up very rapidly for my quick panel. So I'm going to hit OK here and watch my target be built with the proper components. Okay, my Prophecy Machine Edition is now up. If I click on target one, my inspector window shows me the properties of that target. The first thing we notice in red is the computer address. And that is the address of the quick panel that we're going to be downloading to here in a minute, which we just entered into it. 192.168.24.73 is our address. And once I enter it, it goes black here. Now, Prophecy Machine Edition by default has enhanced security enabled, which requires a password to be entered into the quick panel. If you do not want to enter a password in, the enhanced security can be disabled by clicking on the Options tab and then the Preferences under LD PC slash View. And on the right hand side in my inspector, you need to change this to, from Treat as Error to Treat as Warning. That's the first step 
in not having to put a password in your quick panel. Next you need to go back to your project and look at your target and there's the enhanced security here which needs to be turned to false for your download to your quick panel. Now that we've done that we need to go over and look at the device. Under here this is my drivers to my various PLCs. I can see I have my GESRP driver and I have my device below it. If I click on my device I see I've got another piece of red and it's asking for the IP address of my PLC that I want to communicate with. And my PLC IP address is 192.168.24.77. And we hit enter on that. And that establishes our connection down to our PLC. Now that we have our IP addresses entered, we need to create a variable that we'd like to view from our PLC. So I'm going to bring up my variable tab, right click on my variables and select new double integer variable. And I'll call this variable tank level. So I've named my variable but I want to pull a piece of data from my PLC. So I change my data source from the default of internal to PLC access and it chooses device 1 for me and it says what IO address in the PLC. The PLC programmer told me my level was located at %R 1101 as my address. So now I have one variable created that's PLC access. Now if I'd like to see what this variable would be on my screen of my quick panel, I go back over to my project tab and go to my graphic panels and I'm just going to double click on my home tab and there's my home tab and I'm going to grab that variable and simply drag and drop it onto my screen. And I'll make that a little bit bigger here so that we can see it. Now that I have my variable on my screen all it needs to be done is download to my quick panel and see if I have a connection with the PLC and what the value of that tank level is. I downloaded the PLC by clicking the download and start active target icon. And we can see the download happening here and the transferring of the files to the quick panel. And its download is complete with zero errors. And if I minimize this, we have our quick panel screen up and we can see that our tank level is now at 77.92 and rising. So the key takeaways from this video is to remember to save your QP settings by clicking on the backup icon so they're not the power cycle. And also remember that your enhanced security can be disabled if you want it to. Thank you for watching.